The reason that we're here today is because we wanted to share with you that we have initiated uh, contact with the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, the Voting Rights Division of the Civil Rights Division, Department of Justice, Washington, D.C., through the U.S. Attorney's Office here in Oregon for the purposes of asking them to audit the centralized voter registration system here in Oregon. The reason we've done this is because after well over a two-year investigation on our own, uh, we have discovered that there are many inaccuracies and what we believe are outright violations of two federal acts regarding voter integrity that are not being corrected currently here in Oregon. We think that this is not proper. We think it is clear that since we have uncovered clear evidence of this, that we're asking the audit function to be performed by the U.S. Attorney's Office, Department of Justice, as they have done in five other states. That's the first thing we're asking for. The second thing we're asking for is that the legislature and the Secretary of State's office address this issue in the upcoming 2008 special session here in February. We're asking that the legislature consider providing the funding to the Secretary of State's office to go back into the voter registration system and address the issues that we have uncovered that we believe violate federal law. We have uncovered evidence of a number of address problems, a number of individuals who have unbelievably um, impossible birth dates with which they could ever vote. And then most importantly, the fact that individuals have registered to vote in Oregon under the current Help America Vote Act, which is federal law, and have never proven, have never provided proof that they are indeed eligible to vote under federal law. We think these are very serious. The U.S. Attorney's Office agrees with us and is now beginning that process at our request. Um, as it has been said, I mean, we have a very high volume of uh, voters over the age of 100, that, uh, which calls into question how much are we doing to check those people who have been deceased, but also voters who, uh, several thousand voters who have the date of 11-11-1111. Now, it may just say, well, this is just a typo, but this typo is very important because when you have an incorrect date, dates are used to help determine uh, a person's authentic ID. It helps to determine between two people who have the same first, last, middle name. And so when you don't have the date correct of their birth, you can sometimes have, uh, when a person, especially when a person moves from a county, and they don't, they re-register but forget to knock off their, their previous ballot. Well, and if they have, and they come in with a new a, age date, then they could be receiving two ballots because they, they're looked on as different people. So we're not just talking a, a few errors, we are talking about several thousand. So this is something that, that has to be fixed. It creates weaknesses and uh, incorrections and falsehoods in our, our voter system. The other thing with the issue of multiple voters being registered in the same location. Some of them were uh, university, another one was a kind of a spiritual center, a yoga place that had a very small building. We don't know how it could have hold 40 voters at the same time, but it brings up to the issue that when people are registered, they, especially with colleges and shelters, people move to new locations. It's a very transitionary place, but the ballots are not following them. And if the ballots are not following them, that means we literally have hundreds and hundreds of ballots going to different high volume locations. I've been involved in watching the election process now for several years. I'm a witness to the public test and I've been asking questions. And particularly when the Help America Vote Act was passed, I was really concerned when I learned uh, from reading the vote by mail manual and following the process that uh, even when people registered by, by mail, their ballots was and had not provided the proof of ID that was requested uh, in the directive that you'll see in your packet 
uh, directive that was issued at the end of 2002 uh, that required those people to be uh, to uh, require uh, to give proof of ID. Uh, those people were still thrown into the mix on election day, and you'll find in uh, the letter from Marion County, I requested the lists of those people in Washington County, <coughs> Multnomah, Clackamas. Uh, Deschutes and Marion and Lane County. Marion County, uh, and it's the last page in your in your packet. Marion County sent me a very uh, disturbing letter. They said that uh, uh, that they'd been told that according to the Help America Vote Act, once a person had voted in a federal election, whether, apparently whether or not they'd complied with HAVA then there was no further need to go after them to give to get that proof of ID. So these people, even though originally there was a flag indicating that they had not complied, that flag was removed. So we know, and I have lists for at least three counties, of people who did not provide proof of ID in time for the 2004 election, had their ballots counted on election day, and the notation indicating that was removed, so they're lost in the system. And Marion County elections were apologizing that they could not give me the list because their people were lost in the system. Now let me just give you the numbers. In Clackamas County, there were 5,460. Washington County, 4,400. Multnomah County, 11,500. You'd, and 1,540 in Deschutes County. You do the math, this is just four counties. Lane, I went to the trials uh, pertaining to the largest Im immigration fraud in Oregon history. I've provided a copy of that. And in that trial, the defense rightly blamed DMV and their lax uh, rules for facilitating the frauds that occurred. I want to add something else because I when you know I listened to the testimony particularly from undercover detective Victor Castro and he described the process when these people that were brought in not just from south of the border but also from China from Asia and everything all kinds of coyotes at work on this those people would come to the particular DMV uh, satellite and outside there would be vendors selling an envelope for $25 that had gone through the mail and had a pencil address. Their next instruction was to go register to vote. And that address was used for registering to vote. Somebody would be stationed at the location where they expected the vote ID cards to be returned. They knew about this in 2003. You know that the feds are still worried that Oregon is a magnet for, for lawbreakers seeking uh, false IDs uh, for various reasons, welfare benefits, ID, th ID theft, and who knows, maybe terrorism, I'm not speculating. But the fact of the matter is that until we correct the way we register people to vote and the kind of ID that we demand from them and their eligibility, we will remain the same magnet for lawbreakers. And that's why I urge the Secretary of State, the U.S. Attorney, get that corrective work done. Because we need it now in time for the federal elections, and we don't want Oregon to be the magnet for lawbreakers.